Few persons have worked directly and closely with our nation's first four prime ministers. One such person is Nolson Gift, a career public servant and a distinguished diplomat. From childhood, it seemed he was destined for a life in public service. From very early, he took a liking to Spanish, foreign languages as a whole. And um, by the time he got to Form 4, he had mastered the Spanish course. There was nothing in the books that he, he, he didn't know. And he was, um, he was assigned to assisting teachers when they were absent. To, uh, he taught the law forms Spanish. And this was by the time he had reached Form 4. Uh, he was also appointed the unofficial interpreter for the police when Spanish fishermen were arrested or were detained. And um, it, was not, it was not unusual to see the police vehicle would come up to the school, ask for permission to, for him to come down to the police, Scarborough police station, to interview these fishermen. So he developed a high level of competence in both oral and written Spanish before he finished high school. It gave me a kind of exposure, which I found extremely interesting in the sense that you were able to interact with, with foreigners at very high level. I, did, I certainly enjoyed it. That, in a way, gave me the, uh, the ambition to further my career in the field of international relations, international politics. Gift was born in Tobago and grew up on the family estate in Moriah. His childhood was not much different from any other child growing up in Trinidad and Tobago at that time. We played our sports, we flew kites, we pitched marbles, we did just about everything. When I see these young so-called stuntmen, either on a bicycle or on a motorbike, I usually chuckle to myself because the first bicycle stuntman that there ever was, in Tobago at least, was Nolson Gift. I performed as a schoolboy, all sorts of tricks, performed at clubs, entertainment centers, doing all the stunts and the tricks that you could ever think of on a bicycle. Could go up on a, on a table, on a chair, and, and stand up on one wheel and do all the turns. I really, really, if I may say so, with a little bit of immodesty, I think I was good. Gift's application to sports and languages in his formative years also applied to his academic pursuits. He was passionate about all his endeavors. He took very seriously any activity that he engaged in. Uh, he wanted, always wanted to be the best. And this commitment to excellence was exemplified in his academic career. Gift attained a BA with honors from the London University of the West Indies and wrote for Masters of Arts programs in economics and political science at John Hopkins University and Georgetown University in the United States. My parents. They had a vision, and when you look at the humble beginnings, I mean, we were whatever, uh, what you might call asset rich, but cash poor. You know, we had an estate, which we still do, uh, but we were never that liquid in terms of, because we were seven of us, five boys and two girls. And uh, they always taught us frugality, a sense of application, sense of responsibility and to be careful. Um, as a matter of fact, at one time, I believe my brother may have mentioned this to you in a conversation, but the total population of students from Tobago at the Mona campus were the three Gift brothers. We were there together. And this was the ambition they instilled in us, that education is the way, is the way to go so that we, we, all three of us, ended up on the campus at the same time pursuing different academic studies. So in fact, I must say that they were a source of great inspiration to all of us 
as brothers and sisters, and they left an indelible mark. So then I, I caught my brother, I said, you remember so and so and so? Yeah, yeah. This sense of application blossomed into a public service career upon graduation from the Mona campus. When I graduated from, um, from uh, Mona, where I pursued a, an honors degree there in foreign languages, I applied to the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and found myself among the earlier recruits into the ministry as virtually the founding nucleus of what has turned out to be the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Trinidad and Tobago. Um, our batch or batches then comprised of young, very bright um, uh, people, people like the Solomon brothers with Frank and Dennis, John Donaldson, the Wilshire brothers, um, Nathan Hazel, Wilfred Naimul, we had uh, uh, Reginald Dumas, we had quite a, a batch of of, of, of young, enthusiastic, and bright uh, um, aspirants to higher things in the history of the country, Trinidad and Tobago. Gift gave over 30 years service in the diplomatic corps, locally, regionally, and internationally. Among his notable postings were Executive Director, Inter-American Development Bank, Washington, D.C., 1972 to 1986. Deputy Secretary General of the Latin American Economic System, Caracas, Venezuela, from 1976 to 1980. Governor for Trinidad and Tobago on the Board of Governors of the Inter-American Investment Corporation, Washington, D.C., 1984 to 1987. And Ambassador Extraordinaire and Plenipotentiary to the Republic of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, and the Republic of Haiti. Gift then extended his public life, serving as Minister of Foreign Affairs in 1995 and then again in 2002, making ineffaceable contributions to Trinidad and Tobago's growing stature on the international stage. The Haitian experience was fairly recent. In fact, it was uh, 2006. As you know, the election took place and um, there was a standoff as to who among the three contenders who would be accepted as the president, as the winner. The, the situation stayed that way for a few days and indeed the Brazilian which was in charge of the Brazilian government which was in charge of the ground forces there and there were several, several thousands. Um, the general they had gone to, to, to Brazil on vacation and uh, the election was held, a result was obtained, and um, the decision in Brazil was that they would not appoint a new general to go back to, to, to Port-au-Prince unless that general was, would have known who is the president. So the standoff took place. Um, the Brazilian Minister of Foreign Affairs, my good friend and colleague, uh, Celso Amorim, uh, called me and uh, said, well, we have a problem in, 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 in Port-au-Prince. We don't know how we will handle it, but we are calling on your good offices because you have an entree to, these, uh, to the people there to see if you can resolve the situation. I remember distinctly that afternoon, my permanent secretary, who is still, I believe, ambassador to Cuba, he, he was uh, having a meeting with me in my office he said, well, I would like to see how you will handle this one, because this seemed to be a hot potato, a very delicate one at that. I said, well, give me half an hour, and you will see how this is handled. During that half an hour, I contacted another, um, another government, another ambassadorial colleague. We served together as, as ambassadors at the time, and we, we did an international three-way connection, Port of Spain, that particular country, and Port of France. And within the half an hour, we got the contenders who were contending that they would not yield to the decision, we got them to accept that Rene Preval is going to be the president. When I called the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, he said, well, you moved too fast. That was excellent. Congratulations to Trinidad and Tobago. And within short, a short period, the Brazilian government was able to dispatch the head of the armed forces taking charge in Port-au-Prince. Gift also played critical roles in diplomatic lobbying for Carl Hudson Philip QC to be appointed to the International Criminal Court of Justice, 
Dr. Lennox Bala, and then Justice Anthony Lucky to be appointed to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and Justice Melville Beard to sit on the Yugoslav Tribunal, all high-profile appointments for a nation the size of Trinidad and Tobago. This tireless contribution to public life and his country did have a toll on his family life. You were deprived of quality opportunity with them because there were times, for example, depending on the length of a, of a mission. I was on a mission once in Latin America that lasted almost three months. So if, if when I left Washington, my son at the time was, was uh, riding a tricycle. When I came back here, riding a bicycle. So you miss that, 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 that period. But it didn't affect them academically at all. They have all, both of them have done extremely well um, at, 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 in their scholastic work and so on. Notwithstanding this, Giff's commitment to service was unwavering and more so in his capacity of Minister of Foreign Affairs. His contribution in making Trinidad and Tobago a small country, uh, very visible um, in the international arena, I mean, given Trinidad's size, the influence which uh, Trinidad and Tobago has exercised, has exerted on international affairs, is really disproportionate to its size. The voice is more important than the vote because it's the way you can influence people in a conference setting. The way you can influence them when you, when you state your case, you can win their votes so that the voice is as important, if not more so, than the vote at a given point in time. And um, I feel that right now what we need in Trinidad and Tobago is a situation where people can go back into archives and see how this was handled, how the FTA was handled, how the amendment of the Charter of the IDB was handled to permit Guyana and B Belize and so on, which could not enter the bank as members because they had border problems with, with Guatemala and Venezuela and so on. In Parliament, Giff's voice was also heard as he contributed to debates on 21 bills and five motions. Notable among these were debate on the Caribbean Court of Justice Bill of 2004, the International Criminal Court Bills of 2004 and 2005, and the Caribbean Community Bill of 2004. I think his whole background, his whole life, um, up to the point that he was recruited and became a minister um, was preparation for that because he qualified, he, had a, he took a degree in Spanish and um, he spent nearly three decades as a career dip diplomat. Uh, he was first posted to Venezuela, that was his first foreign posting and then he was sent off to Washington, D.C., uh, where he was served, where he served as, as an alternative representative to the OAS, in addition to his substantive post as a diplomat in Washington. And he served on the Inter-American Development Bank. He was a director there for two terms of eight years, and this meant that his beat included all of the Latin American countries. And in addition to that, he took courses at two universities in Washington, the Georgetown University and the John Hopkins University, and uh, eventually graduated with an MA in political science and a qualification in Portuguese. So he then added Portuguese to, uh, to his language competence, which was confined to Spanish previously. So he, he, had, he, he had a high level of mastery of the two major languages spoken in Latin America. Gift had an uncompromising commitment to Trinidad and Tobago's foreign affairs agenda. Um, it's a kind of a thankless job. It's a kind of a thankless job. But you see, one has to live with one's conscience. And one knows that when one goes out there and performs to his maximum capacity, that that's a job well and properly done. I, I uh, fought the good fight. 
I, all my battles out there as a representative of Trinidad and Tobago, the highest diplomatic post as Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, I did my best whenever I had to negotiate. I, I, I would do this very easily, whether we were, were doing it in English, we were doing it in Spanish, we were doing it in Portuguese. There are times when you went to conferences, there are no translators or interpreters. You found, for example, you were on a plane, and when you get to the airport in Buenos Aires or something about you know, somebody comes to you and says, oh, Mr. Gift, Mr. Minister, you have been selected to chair this meeting. Here are your documents. This is the kind of international respect that Trinidad and Tobago had, had developed over the years. That once a Trinidad and Tobago delegate of, of, that, cut, of that ambassadorial cut was, um, was attending a meeting, a lot of responsibility and expectation were put on him. I would like to be remembered if people can use my experience as a reference source. So some of them do, a lot of people call me all from New York, Washington in consultation, they're doing their PhDs and their masters and so on. I would like if I were able to set up a little trust, even here at this, at this residence, uh, run by somebody that they can, because I have very, very unique documentation in this in here, um, which would show you the essence and the hallmark and the, the ups and downs of what happens as a foreign policy, uh, in, in, a, in a foreign policy perspective, particularly for a small country.